So I was actually going to university around the same time that CRISPR was first published and I just thought this was amazing. I was excited. <laughs> Still excited. <laughs> the idea of being able to selectively breed for characteristics has been around for a long time. So for example, with dog breeds, people decided that they liked certain characteristics and then bred for them. And then it wasn't until they discovered the structure that you begin to actually be able to manipulate it a bit more and do a bit of proper, what we know now as gene editing. They didn't know until Watson, Crick, Franklin and Maurice in the 1950s what the structure was and what they had to play with. In the 60s, they discovered the first kind of enzymes that you could use to kind of cut and rejoin DNA. But even that is very crude and it was only really used in bacteria. CRISPR-Cas9 you can think of kind of as molecular genetic scissors. It originally existed naturally in bacteria and bacteria would use it to cut up any invading viruses that invaded their genome. In 2012, what Jennifer Downer and Emmanuel Charpentier discovered was how to adapt that for our own uses and to make really precise um, CRISPR cuts into DNA. We still don't know if there's another better CRISPR system out there, um, but yeah, a lot of it that I can see happening in the kind of more immediate future is about refinements to CRISPR and also looking more at how we use CRISPR, especially in terms of medical therapeutics and in humans.